So, please take a seat. It's again me, so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, I believe that uh, we have in front of us one of, to be frank, really of the very interesting panels here. Because uh, when we started Next, actually, we see many, many times that uh, we just speak about Big Pharma and uh, that's okay, right? But we also have, let's say, smaller and medium-sized pharmaceuticals who are doing some pretty amazing job due their flexibility, due their openness, etc. Meaning that uh, I believe that sometimes we can also learn from them, right? And here on stage, we are having, uh, from my left, uh, Hank Sherba. Uh, coming from Chroma, ex Novartis, so I believe this is an interesting mixture because you know how it is to work in big pharma and how it is to work yes. in small pharma. You are around at 150 million in revenue. Yep. So quite comparable to Pfizer's 53 billion, right? It's killed. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we have Alessandro Mele from Zambon, uh, who you already met. Uh, they are at uh, 2. Point something billion, right? No, it's less than one. Was the land okay? And we have Hemofarm, uh, also very interesting company, owned by Stada actually. And you are on roughly around 300, if I'm not mistaken. 150 sales in West Balkan, but total Stada is 2.5 billion euros. Okay, so. let's make it 300 sales. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, I would like first of all to make a short introduction of your, let's say, company, about your particular proud. And uh, I would like to start with you, Hank, because uh, we all know you work with Novartis, uh, which is of course, huge, and now you're working in a much different environment. Uh, without hurting anybody, where, where, where is it better to work? Do you have more flexibility now? Uh, is the decision making much faster? Uh, yeah, let's say, so just about our company, it's a family owned uh, company based close to Vienna. We are focusing on aesthetic business, so we are really doing this beauty business basically. Uh, and uh, there we are on a nice way up, but still we are very small, as you said, yeah, but we are growing quite fast. So I came directly working from Novartis before that also for Ila Lilly and for Roche. So I know different big companies and I would say um, the advantage to work for a small company is also the disadvantage. So first of all, we have a much smaller organization. So you are responsible for a lot of things. So mm -hmm. basically I'm leading the whole commercial business worldwide, including our distribution partners, but also our affiliates. We have in 11 countries and our joint ventures. So you can make decisions much faster, but sometimes perhaps you don't make the right decisions okay. <laughs> because you lack capacities and mm. uh, people. Yeah. So many roles, but at the end of the day, one paycheck, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alessandro? Yes, I have already presented Zambon, and with, with regards to your question, what I am more proud of internally in my organization with regards to the commercial part. I think that for a company of our size, it's really important the strategic planning. Uh, strategic planning to have a clear view of what we need to achieve to then move to the execution with limited resources sometimes. And most of all, also a clear strategy for the future to be able, for example, with BD, to capture the right opportunities. For big pharma, they are big fish, so it's easier to capture the small fish in terms of a, opportunities for us we need to be faster so have clearly in mind what we need to look for to improve even the uh, even the portfolio so strategic planning is is crucial and in our organization is very uh, is very well uh, is very well recognized but saying about strategic plans actually strategic plans you always make on long term or at least middle term right and uh, how flexible are you let's say if you have a brilliant idea, a brilliant master plan to implement something, but which is not aligned with the strategic plan. How fast is the decision flow in that case? Yeah, uh, uh, the strategic planning is on a range of five years and with one additional strategic plan uh, every uh, three years. Uh, and this is a new process in the company start just, we are doing our second uh, plan this, uh, uh, this year. And we are flexible, uh, we are very linked to the strategy, but flexible to capture uh, additional uh, additional opportunities, uh, if any. Okay, thank you, Alessandro. Marco? Hi, Dario. I have been working in Hemofarm for more than 15 years, and uh, Hemofarm is part as, of Stade Group, as I said, as a pure generic company. Uh, operates on West Balkan markets, so on, on, on 
five countries and uh, I'm leading the marketing department, uh, meaning the, uh, leading the strategy for current portfolio introduction of uh, new portfolio. Today I will also represent my colleagues from commercial department because we developed a lot of uh, in commercial excellence and uh, sales force engagement uh, on the field. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we see lots of passwords these days, AI, ML, chatbots, etc. It's all fine, it looks very great, and I believe that we are going to the right direction. But uh, will this incrementally change the commercial model which we have currently, and mm -hmm. then these real changes will be implemented? What, what's your opinion? And if you, of course, if you have some real cases, if you already started to do something in this field. So I think, for instance, digital transformation you see over the last 10 years, so it's a very long digital transformation so yes. far, same with patient or customer centricity, but I think what is a really game changer over the next years is big data and artificial intelligence, because it will help us basically to enhance the capabilities of our and decision making of our reps. Yeah? So right now we have due to the digitalization so many more data available to our reps and to our people. So it's very hard for them to draw the right conclusions out of that. And without artificial intelligence, it's basically not possible, I think, in the future to really Im improve the next best action you can do as a sales rep. So I think this will have the biggest impact on how we interact with our customers in the future, because with artificial intelligence, we can do more personalized messaging to our customers in the future. Have you done already something in this field or? Yes, let's say not at Chrome, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but in other companies, yes. Let's say there were approaches how to deal with that. Okay, thanks a lot. Alessandro? Yeah, from my point of view, the two uh, key words are uh, customer experience and artificial intelligence. But I think that we need uh, uh, to think about the business and not about the technology. So first having in mind what we want to uh, achieve and then move to the technology and with regards to the artificial intelligence from my perspective in the commercial uh, from the commercial uh, side perspective is all about being in the condition to capture all the opportunities for uh, organic organic growth and this turns into next best action and all the tools that we can provide to the reps uh, in the field to uh, to make uh, to make this a reality we plan to work on this we are not yet working on it at all but we plan to move to this very soon with expanding our current analytical uh, platform solution with artificial intelligence second point customer experience we need to uh, still work on the crm platform and that's the uh, as usual, it's very important in, in commercial excellence, uh, and we start. We are starting a big project in this uh, in this area. I take your point, and uh, absolutely, experience is, I would say, the most important thing in any organization, not just in farm. Uh, but uh, my personal opinion is, when we speak about experience, I believe that AI can for sure improve that experience because then even machines can, of course, give some suggestions, corrections, etc. So I believe that we will enter someday this stage. Uh, or at least we are reaching out these steps. So. Yeah, for sure the uh, customer experience and uh, advanced analytics with perspective, perspective analytics are very connected to each other. We can think that you asked to separate it with us for sure. So, uh, let's say to, to simplify the question, do you believe that AI will be like an add-on on everything what you do today? Like in CLM, CLM-driven AI, CRM-driven AI, uh, I mean, everything AI, do, do you believe that this engine will actually have its use cases in, in re reality? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe uh, for the long term, for, for the long term, for sure. I think pragmatically, uh, to start delivering something, uh, it's better to start with a clear focus on something. And still, from my perspective, the priority at the time being will be mostly on the analytics side. Mm -hmm. Having in mind that even the CRM and in the future CLM can be uh, can be linked with the uh, with the uh, with the advanced uh, and perspective analytics. Thank you, Marco. We as a company are on the maximum phase for fighting for uh, prescription more and recommendation more, and um, I think that we use up the maximum of uh, classical approach to market and face-to-face uh, -face detailing model, meaning that uh, our sales force uh, has been developing one really extraordinary sales uh, CRM 
system together with, with your company, Dario, and uh, Salesforce is actually maximum equipped uh, to approach to healthcare professionals, to pharmacies with uh, already digital content, uh, CLM uh, uh, classification, segmentation of doctors on the one hand. On the other hand, we invented the real-time marketing plan that actually uh, supports Salesforce that uh, uh, has to promote uh, more than 60, 70 strategic products during the, the promotional cycle, which is very difficult to operate with uh, uh, such many products. But to maintain position number one on the market, and not only to maintain, but not to lose market share, actually that this is necessity. Also, uh, through that system, not only that we developed uh, integrated marketing plan and uh, digital content communication, we also developed uh, uh, sales floor plans, analytical data on monthly and weekly level connected to KPIs. So I would say that our sales force is uh, maximum equipped to go on the field. But this is still a traditional model of uh, going to market and approach. What we need in the next step as a company, and I think that many companies need that, especially generic companies, is to find another approach for these new challenging times and this many buzzwords that you mentioned that I found in, in your brochure, like artificial, artificial, artificial intelligence, big data, uh, patient centricity, and, and so on. We are just that exploring and start to create this uh, tactics and approach, but not alone as a Hemofer company, but on the corporate uh, Stadler. But do you believe, let's say, theoretically, you come from small or medium-sized pharmaceuticals. Uh, theoretically, if you would implement all of these passwords, AI, ML, so let's say all the all the bunch of things, do you believe that you could make a huge progress or even a better and bigger growth than let's say some big players? Uh, do you believe that this com competitive advantage is possible with such kind of technology, or are you still quite suspicious about this? Because at the end of the day, we speak about a very regulated market. You you cannot implement. Everything like uh, if you're in a bank industry or a car manufacturer, right? I, I'm convinced that you could that this could make a difference. The problem is you have about the same costs uh, independently of your revenue. Yeah? So <laughs> if you implement this Novartis, of course, it's very uh, easy and likely worth it. If you implement it in a company that makes 150, 300 million, uh, perhaps it's a little bit too expensive for some of the tools. But if you would have everything available, of course, you could make a difference in better growth and better sales. You think so, yeah? I'm convinced, yes. Yeah, I think so for sure. Uh, that can make the difference uh, on the business. And I think that for the small companies, even more important. Because we need to be distinctive. Exactly. And uh, advance the better usage of the data uh, is crucial. And our size uh, can allow us to be faster, maybe, than the big, uh, uh, the big pharmaceutical uh, uh, company, so to be the faster, I like the example of the faster fish. So the technology can enable us to be the, to be faster. Uh, what is the uh, problem on the other side? The problem on the other side is that sometimes we don't have the right infrastructure. As a small company, you can not even think to be comparable to uh, a big farm, and that's all about good allocation of the budget have a clear uh, vision of the investment that you need to do and put together the investment of different departments. That, in a small company, is easier. Investment of IT, investment of digital, investment of marketing in the same direction. With all the budget well allocated, even a small company can set in place a good infra infrastructure to make the difference and be faster than, than big firm. Thank you. Marco? I'm also not suspicious. I'm actually encouraged by uh, today's presentation by uh, very good presenters and uh, uh, I saw that uh, field is moving and developing on but one of the speakers said a very very good thing actually a uh, company with uh, limited resources and no, non experience in, in uh, uh, the new developments uh, depend a lot of uh, vendors who has better knowledge in this moment than what to offer to, to each company I think that each company has to be prepared to know what they want and the way where the company wants to be developed and then to start to gain a step-by-step -step benefits from uh, artificial intelligence, big data and, uh, and another uh, new fancy things. Actually, I'm 
fan of uh, big data and, and analytics and really truly believe that uh, maybe some commercial plan and commercial strategies could be better combined by artificial intelligence than the group of people with different attitudes and, and knowledge. Because what happens, for instance, in other industries, as you all know, we have, for instance, take as example the car manufacturers, right? Uh, where you have Tesla, they are like 15 years in business, and they disrupted the whole industry. I mean, they, they started a revolution in this field, right? Meaning that uh, what's interesting, they are doing everything in-house, uh, they have been limited resources, but they really make decisions very fast. And today you have Tesla as the more or less flagship producer of electric cars. Uh, I doubt what will happen with them for the upcoming five to ten years. I believe that Germans will uh, some, somehow really compete even in a better way with them. Uh, but uh, do you think that such business model is possible in pharma to achieve? I mean, that we have a startup. Uh, I mean, Amazon is entering. I consider Amazon as a startup in the, in the pharma and healthcare industry. Uh, do you believe that this is possible to achieve such huge changes in such short period of time? Mm, yes, I assume so. So first of all, you know, you see what the big uh, digital companies can achieve just with algorithm in search engines. So uh, I think some of the, even some of the jobs of some doctors will not exist in some years. So pathologists, I think right now, uh, uh, the computer is a better diagnose, uh, diagnostic tool than the pathologist to diagnose uh, cancer uh, samples. Then you also have seen some, uh, let's say, a diagnose of uh, um, other cancer types based on search words in Google. Yeah? So I think this will change a lot of the business uh, model in the future. And of course, um, the, all this online sensors and all the stuff, you know, if you look in veterinary pharma, you will see what is already possible or would be possible in human pharma because there you don't have any concerns about data privacy, human rights and so on. Yeah? So you can measure a lot of things online. So in the future, I think the business will be totally different. So you will have online sensors, you will measure your blood pressure every day. You will, uh, and this, I think all these different tools that are available right now, this will change the way how we do medicine in the future. And I'm sure some small company can pop up suddenly and do similar things as and Tesla. Yeah. It's disrupt everything, but then, as you said, the big ones will catch up very fast exactly. and buy them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not bad at all, right? <laughs> yes. So, but I'm sure that in 15 years from now, this will be totally different. Yeah, I think that the impact of startups and technological uh, companies in the pharma business will be great, big in the uh, in the future. Um, but at the end, the pharma company will survive for sure. <laughs> and uh, the the point is that to make sure to avoid to lose business, they need to understand what is the trend and to find partnership with with startups first of all. And I think this is something that the uh, pharmaceutical industry is already doing, and in some cases is already doing that very, uh, very well. And also understanding the impact of the internet players such as such as Amazon. And this is something I think that the other on the other side is underestimating. So this is the biggest risk for the uh, uh, for the pharma industry, in my my view. Marco. Okay, one thing is clear that uh, technology is growing faster than ever and actually no one's know where it will bring us. But uh, I think that uh, technology giants and the new tech uh, startups will really help the pharma companies to improve their efficiency and to be better on, on the field. Uh, I think that they will not jeopardize the pharma business, but they will find a common model to, to act together and to have benefit both. Complex question, but I would like to ask for a simple answer. So, how do you see the commercial model in three years? In overall, so not at your company, in overall. Will it change dramatically? Uh, what will change? So, what's your vision of the, let's say, commercial model for the upcoming three years? So, I think in three years there will not be too much change. So, they will go, uh, you know, the continuous improvement of the process or change of the process will continue, but I think there will be more in 10 or 15 years a big change. And I agree, pharma will still exist, but perhaps the roles will be called differently and you will see some smaller companies uh, being bought or yeah, yeah. <laughs> stopping business and new companies coming up. But I think in three years, you will not see too much change. So, still, the reps will go to the doctors and try to generate prescriptions. 
and, and still, um, yeah, we will try to enhance digital usage of our doctors and learn from them, but that's basically, I think, in three years from now, it will not be too different. In terms of commercial models within a single uh, company, uh, I think the biggest changes needed uh, are in the sales force, for sure, uh, but the sales force will be still the most important channel for pharma industry in three years, I'm pretty sure about that. And I think the, we, we talk a lot about how we need to evolve the role of the rep, the role of the area manager according to the technology. Sometimes we underestimate uh, how important it is to transform the marketing department. The marketing department needs to be able uh, to provide content for all the different channels. And it's quite unusual that in our industry we still speak about digital transformation. So digital is a reality. It should be the marketing able to provide content for all the, uh, for all the, uh, for all the different channels. So my expectation is to have at least, I don't know if, if this is going to happen, but the biggest changes are needed in the marketing, uh, the marketing department in the commercial organization. Okay, thank you. Actually, traditional commercial model is uh, under pressure for some ages because uh, differences among the products are shrinking and access to uh, healthcare professionals are limited and also the power is shifting to consumer and to, and to healthcare uh, providers. Uh, preparing for to that question, I actually search for opinion of uh, pharma leaders and experts, experts in, in uh, uh, commercial model development. And uh, uh, many of them actually claim that the tra traditional model, face-to-face uh, -face detailing, will just stay in function and that uh, commercial function will just add another uh, task to do on the field. What uh, many of uh, them also claim it's that the pharma industry has to find the model so-called beyond the pill and to create uh, integrated uh, customer solution model, which is also connected with some obstacles in the pharma industry because uh, pharmaceutical company are used on, uh, to, to have uh, the, the nice and huge margin and no one is willing to invest on such a journey. Also, uh, by the business pharma companies are more oriented uh, in cell not used to be connected with uh, end patients and to, and to have uh, real interaction with, with, with patients and with, with uh, another stakeholders and uh, when that overcome that new model will come in place so it will happen probably very soon but uh, I couldn't guess where. Thank you very much. We have time for questions so <laughs> Who would like to ask the gentlemen? I believe that uh, they have been quite interested, and so please, we are looking for your questions. The first question should be the first, then we have the others, right? <laughs> Any questions? Okay, we have one, please. Uh, you will get the microphone. <laughs> but not for home, it's just for here. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's since I cannot keep it, never mind. So. My question is, you mentioned a couple of times CLM closed marketing, right? Can you name, please, um, at least one use case within your company? How did you, how, how do you use actually CLM uh, within your business? Closed loop uh, marketing for us actually meaning that uh, every sales representative is uh, equipped with, uh, with the digital uh, professional information that they are providing to the doctor. Uh, each doctor is uh, segmented by category and which product will be promoted on spot. Uh, also, uh, through the CRM system, we developed uh, some tools that categorize the uh, doctors on very objective way of classification ABC and uh, the total engagement of uh, uh, medical representatives actually for us uh, represented this, this closed loop uh, in, in communication. But uh, just to point out that uh, this uh, flexibility and, and the fast shifting on the focus on the field uh, for us is uh, crucial uh, because, uh, for example, in Serbian market we are selling more than 400 products and in active promotion is almost 100 products and it's uh, really difficult uh, to uh, uh, create sales and, and marketing tactics with, with such, such a many uh, products. But on the other hand, this is necessity if you want to keep uh, a market share, which, which is our uh, main goal in business. Any other questions? 
Okay. Hello, hello. Perfect. Um, so the question for all three of you guys is, if you continue doing what you're doing now from a sales and marketing perspective, and you mentioned how we have to, in, we have to move faster, we have to continue to evolve to stay up. If you froze everything you're doing in time now and did that for the next five to 10 years, do you think your company would still be profitable, still be viable, still be a competitor? So let's say if we didn't invest more in the rep tools, we didn't invest more in AI, machine learning, and all this stuff. If we're doing exactly what we're doing now, five years from now, how would your company look, you think? Would, does that make sense? Because right now this whole, conference, this whole conference is about, you know, we have to race to the future, race to the future, but if we did nothing... We, we all know for the, from the theory that uh, doing nothing is the, the short way to decline with the business. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, of course that we have to uh, improve the model that we are doing now, but uh, also with the uh, help of experts, I would say, because uh, the one of the worst thing is to think that you're expert for everything and that you know how to implement the digital, artificial intelligence and all these new bus technologies by, by uh, our own. As I said, uh, Stada just started to uh, hire the consultants on this uh, way uh, how to uh, implement it, how to, let's say, modernize Salesforce, not only in Chemofirm as a part of Stada, but in many different uh, companies in, in Stada University. From my side, very quickly, I think that the, uh, we need to keep doing what we already do, and we need to do what we already do even better, maybe with low investment, and to do something more only with when we are sure that it is a good impact on the business, not just investing in innovation for our innovation. Understand what can make the what can make the difference. Invest just just there, but still being in excellent in what we already do. I think that's the, and, that's just the point. Just to add, I think, for instance, I think our growth will be limited, we will not decline or we will not die, basically, within the next five, three to five years, but I think the growth is limited if you don't improve all the time and if you don't continue to improve your sales force and your go-to-market models. Any other questions, since we are already out of time, so maybe you can reconnect with the gentlemen during the break. Uh, I would like to thank you. Hopefully it was interesting and uh, now we have also one very interesting keynote coming from Gabriel from Santos. So thank you very much gentlemen. Thank you. I'm with you, David. Thank you.